Hey, Blender Bob here. You probably expected the fourth part of the VFX for the movie Clouds. Well, we have to put this on standby for a while because we need Disney's clearance to do it. So the producer is working on it. I'm really glad the company is supporting me on this because you know they could have said, you think we're going to contact Disney for Blender Bob? But yeah, they're doing it and I really appreciate it. Thank you. They're all behind me. Hey, guys. Okay, so let's change, let's change the subject. Let's talk dirty. No, I'm not doing porn. It's Blender Bob. Blender Bob. Blender Bob, I do it every week, the 3D stuff. It's not porn. I'll be right back. Okay, so where were we? You saw the title, it says, Stop Making Kitchens and Living Rooms in Blender. Why? I mean, there are so many beautiful art being done. Some of the pictures I saw, it's just, wow, the rendering is beautiful, the lighting is perfect. Everything is perfect. Why stop? Well, because everything is perfect. If you work in the architecture world, yeah, sure, knock yourself out. Do it as perfect as you want. If you work in the film industry, chances are you're not going to make something that looks that good because it doesn't happen really often that you need to do a kitchen or a living room that is so clean. No, usually we do stuff that's like old and that's destroyed or that's blown up. If you want to do a kitchen, make it like a Game of Thrones kitchen. Make it old, old wood with scratches on it, with stuff spilled everywhere, with the burned parts or whatever, and, you know, it needs to look organic, not too, not too rigid, not too, you know, uh, everything is a straight line, everything is just... Mm, uh, 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 uh. No, we want it imperfect. So let me show you a project I did a few weeks ago, and you'll see what I mean. And this is the job we are talking about. It was a really rushed job. I had a weekend to do it. Well, a very long weekend, actually starting Friday evening at like 6 o'clock until midnight. Then a very long weekend and the renders finished during the night on Sunday and I did the final compositing Monday morning at 7 o'clock. Just in time for the delivery Monday morning at 9 o'clock. They were supposed to shoot this for real, but with COVID and all the problems that comes with it, they decided to go CG. This is the reference image they gave me. They didn't want the big metal doors here. They didn't want this in chrome. They didn't want that part. And it looks like the walls are made of metal parts or whatever. We don't want that. We want regular walls. It looks like there's a big storm coming from our neighbors from the south here. It's coming up north. So we will have to be careful about this. There's going to be some clouds here, probably for all weekend and temperatures at about five degrees. So I used this image as a template to start building my model. I had some other references here from a real hospital. You can see the walls are shiny here. It's because it's easier to clean this way. And some props here and more references that I could use for inspiration. Modeling wise, there's nothing complicated about it. It's quite simple. I mean, you make one door and you repeat it six times and then you made some props. You just copy them all around. Nothing fancy. I'm not gonna win an Oscar for modeling on this one. Still, you have to look at some details like here, you know, on the metal bar, I just made it a little bit, you know, not straight where the screws are so that it creates a little distortion here in the texture just to make it more realistic. I didn't bother to do the UVs properly on this and the texture is a little bit screwed up, but I don't care because, you know, we're never going to see that. Some of the paint have been chipped off on the corners here. Attention to details. Turn the wheels a little bit. They shouldn't be straight because it was placed in this position, so probably the wheels are not straight. Is anybody going to see that? Probably not. Look at this part here. It's really simple. It's just a square and another one inset and that's it. Super simple. Same thing for the fire thing here, the alarm. There's not even a texture on it. I didn't even bother. I didn't have time anyway. If we look at the ceiling, it's really flat, but it's the textures that are going to give it some life. I didn't properly close the corners here and that's on purpose. I wanted a little gap just to make it unperfect. We don't want everything to be too perfect. Here I put a list of all the effect shots I need to do on a short movie I'm working on. Because why not? I didn't model the stretcher, but I did make the corners a little bit dirty to make it more realistic. I looked at my own ceiling and I could see that it's not perfect. It's a little bit crooked, so I did the same thing on my model. It's just a little bit just to make sure it's not perfectly straight. If you have seen my clip about uh, Bevel Extra, uh, I was modeling a laptop, a Mac laptop. Well, that's the exact same technique here, the same method. It's just bevels, inset, extrudes, and that's it. For the sign, the exit sign, well, actually, Soxy, uh, it's actually just a plane. I didn't model the letters. It's a plane with a displacement map applied on it, and that's how I get my letters. And I just added a red plane behind so that when the displacement goes far enough, we can see the red letters. If you speak French, you know that Sorti shouldn't take an S at the end, but that's on purpose. It was for the commercial. 
let's talk textures. I could see in the reference uh, given by the client that the ceiling was in metal but wasn't perfectly flat so what I did is just created a bump map and I just put a musk graph texture on it and that's it. A little brightness contrast to adjust it and that's what I did to give it this more realistic look. I added some imperfections on the walls. They are barely visible in the final render but they are there you know a little bit under here also on the some cracks here and for the bump map same thing as the ceiling I use a muscle graph for a general distortion on the wall but I also mixed it with a noise to create the little orange peel texture. For the floor I use an add-on called Lily Surface Scraper. I learned about this add-on by watching one of Daniel Kraft's videos. If you don't know this guy, you need to go check him out. Link is in the description. He does videos like 100 add-ons you should know about, 100 tips, 150 tips, 200 tips, all the modifier nodes, all the compositing nodes. Really, really interesting stuff. So you need to go check him out, subscribe to his channel. It's really worth it. Okay, let's go back to our stuff. Super easy to use. You click on one of the four websites that are available. You search for your texture. You select the one you want. Let's say I want to take this one here. Click. And then you just copy the URL that you have on top here. Copy. And then you click the button that says import from clipboard. And magically it's going to create the shader for you with all the textures already attached to it. You adjust the scaling and you are done. Now, in this case, I didn't want that kind of texture, so what I did is to change the diffuse for a linoleum texture, and it worked perfectly. When you set up your render settings, you can turn on ambient occlusion, but I didn't like the result it gave me. It was too gray, too flat, and super grainy, so instead, I went to plan B. So, select an object in your scene, any object, it doesn't really matter, and we're going to create a new shader. So, we're going to go into shader here, click plus. We're going to create a new one, we're going to call it AOC. It's not for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, it's for ambient occlusion. Now this shader, we can get rid of the principal BSDEF, we don't need it. We're going to create an ambient occlusion, pipe it straight into the surface. I changed the distance to 6. And now we need to create a new render layer. So we're going to create a new one here, new. We're going to call it AOC also. And on this layer, we're going to go completely at the bottom here, there's an option called Material Override and we're going to select our shader. And that means that the entire layer will be overwritten with the shader. So now if I render, I get a perfect AOC pass. Okay, sorry, I had to do it. This is what you actually get. You can see there's a big difference between the two of them. Compositing wise, I didn't have to do that much. I just multiplied the occlusion on the beauty pass and that's pretty much it. It gives it much more contrast. You can see in the corner here, the big difference it makes. It's much nicer. When I did the render, I did have the crypto mat, so I could select any object and change it any way I want. So I could pick the wall here, use it as an alpha for my grade node, and just change the color of the walls if I wanted to. It turned out that I didn't need it at all, but you know, it's still good to have the option, and you know, I can show you what it what I could have done with it. You see, I could change the walls for blue to any colors I want, and it's really, really fast and easy to do, and you don't need to re-render anything. So I usually always render the crypto mat just in case. And the last step was to add some grading in DaVinci Resolve. If I had the time, I could have pushed it even more. But also, you need to consider what the project is about. What are you selling? Is it good enough for what you're doing? You really need to focus on where you need to put your energy. For example, the frame under the sortie. You can see it's, you can feel the brush strokes, the paint chip off, and all these little things that make it cool. It's better to spend time on the imperfections than making it perfect. Does that make any sense to you? Well, it does to me. Look at the difference it made just removing the bump maps on the ceiling, on the floor, and on the walls, and the spickler on the walls. Making them imperfect made them better. So what's the difference between a Blender user and a Maya user? The Maya user thinks he's really, really happy. 